In today's video, I'm gonna make a container for Sukuna's last finger. All right, I have two problems. The first one is that my shed was taken over by plants and now I have to film right here. And the second one is that a friend of mine, let's call him Mike, celebrates his birthday in three days and I still need a present. As you know, I like to make props and dioramas but I don't have a place to display them. But Mike does, so I thought I'd make him props from our favorite French rifles for his birthday and he can display them at his spot. So for two years, two years ago, I made him a dragon handle from Sam Deadly Sins. Um, last year I built him a little Sith Holocron diorama, definitely check that video out if you haven't already. And for this year I already have a really good idea. One of his favorite manga is Chuchuchu Kaisen. For everybody who don't know Chuchuchu Kaisen, it's about um, a guy fighting curses and he eats the finger of the strongest curse so to get stronger and fight more curses and yeah um, what I want to say is that exactly that finger that the main character eats is the prop I want to make for Mike this year so the curse the finger belongs to is called Sukuna that's him right here and I found a really nice 3D model of his finger on Thingiverse by Nairo555. Um, so definitely check that out. I could have also modeled the finger myself, but I'm still practicing organic 3D modeling and that's too much for me for now. Uh, anyways, let's print that finger. I print the whole thing on my Anycubic Photon Mono in Anycubic gray resin with a layer height of 3.5 millimeters. And as always, make sure to give your resin a good shake before 3D printing. And here they are. Uh, freshly 3D printed, washed and cured. I already removed the support and I know I say this every time but the Photon did a great job here. Um, so next step is painting and therefore I made a little concept art that I can look at uh, while applying the paint. So let's not waste any more time and let's go. So the fingers are dry and now I want to give them a dark wash. For that I'm going to mix up some um, red paint with a lot of black. So now I'm going to give them another wash, but this time a bit more reddish. So now that this wash is dry as well, I'm going over it um, for the last time with a dark wash. Okay, so here I have Sukuna's finger and here I also have Sukuna's finger and no, that's not wet. I gave it a clear coat and I have to say that it looks awesome. Um, I mean it looks awful. Uh, I, it, it, it looks awful awesome. I tried that on this finger in case it's not coming out as expected um, so that I have this finger left but to be honest I couldn't imagine it to be that good because it look, really looks so naturally. It almost looks like you cut it right off someone's hand and, and it's still alive. Um, so I'm going to give the second finger a clear coat as well because this looks awesome. Okay, now that the hardest part is done, I can start making the rest of the diorama and for that I already modeled something. Okay, that's the model I came up with. I thought of something like an industrial container that you maybe find in a secret laboratory. Um, something like in the Venom movie. Uh, that's why I chose this signal yellow as the color for the end pieces. So have a look around. Um, in here that should be acrylic tubing. And I hide that, the brown piece that is representing the finger, it's just there that I have a scale on how big the finger is so that I can model the rest around it. I make that visible again. And I imagine the finger like floating inside the container, maybe um, changed to the left and right and some LEDs lighting it. Um, from the left and right and maybe I could fill a fluid uh, into the container that would be really cool and I also made a stand 
Um, I took some inspiration from the LEGO UCS sets. They have this uh, sign at the front with a little text that informs you about what the set represents. Um, and I thought maybe you could put a sign here as well, like a Japanese text and an English text as a translated version, um, so that you can read what's inside the container. So that's why I modeled this um, piece at the front right here. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty good concept so far. I got a package and inside this package there is the acrylic tubing. And I also 3D printed a test piece to see um, if all the dimensions are correct before I 3D print the rest. So let's put that on here. Yeah. That's a really tight fit. Um, awesome. Now I can print all the other parts. And here are the other parts so I can spray paint them all. And here they are, painted and dry. I wasn't able to film everything because after two and a half years the corona pandemic finally got me. However, I painted the outsides in yellow as you can see and on the end caps I painted the end silver and on the inner sides I on the um, inside caps I painted the insides in silver and I painted a little 20 for specimen 20 and also the little rings that go over uh, here between those two I painted silver as well so the next step are the electronics so I got these lights right here um, they are meant for um, RC cars so let's give them a bit of power to show you how they look and to show you my problem turn them on and as you can see I turn off the light there are all the colors there are the white for the um, lights in the front and there are the orange and for the indicators and the red ones for the brakes but I only want the light uh, the, the, the whites so what I have to do <coughs> I'm still a bit sick um, I have to switch um, two of these lights with another white LEDs because I want four white LEDs in my little container Now you might ask yourself why didn't I just use regular LEDs, why did I sacrifice perfectly fine LEDs? Um, it's because of this little white thing right here, because I want to use this metal housings and they um, are supposed to go in there and line the LED up at the front. That's why I had to use this car LEDs. So now that all the electronics are done, I can start assembling the first parts. I previously mentioned I want to chain the fingers into the chamber and therefore I got these little chains from the hardware store and here I made a little test piece um, to see if it's possible to make a little ring out of them as you can see um, it fits perfect I just have to bend open the chain links uh, connect them and close them again so let's make some more chains for this finger and tada, I made a little chain ring that should fit over the finger, but not all the way. Let's see. Yes, it stops where I want it to stop. And here I have one for the front, just like that. so that you can see it perfect so now I have to measure the length for the chains from one end to the other and for that um, I know that these two sides are 18 centimeters apart from each other so let's try that and make some more chains
to be honest, that looks pretty cool so far. And now I'm ready to cut the tubing. And there I have it, freshly cut. So now I just have to assemble it. All right, so far that looks pretty cool to me. Um, now I just have to finish the electronics and put on the end caps and then I'm done. So now let's see if the electronics work. I turn off the lights and plug them in. And voila! Perfect. Now I can put on the end caps. So the end caps are on. This is finished. Now I just have to make a stand and therefore I already 3D printed this black stand right here. Um, that holds the tubing. So I just have to make a little sign for the front right here. And there it is, a really cool looking front sign. And when I put the container on, this thing is finished. So that's the end of this video, I think it turned out really cool, if you think so too then feel free to like, share and subscribe, here more videos, here you can find my channel, so have a nice day and see you soon.